Hello everybody, welcome again. Andrea Tarowski here with Dental L Tutoring. Now let's talk some more questions, shall we? Because I know that everybody loves questions. So I actually pulled up this PowerPoint from a previous board exam boot camp that I have had. Now we're not gonna go through all of the questions because there's a ton here, but at least we'll go through some to get you guys started because I'm actually having another board exam boot camp in a couple weeks because the September exam is fast approaching. Now, if you're a member of the Board Exam Prep Academy, you will get this Board Exam Boot Camp full review for free. So if you're a member, obviously don't sign up for it because you will get the whole thing for free. But if you were thinking about signing up for this, it's about um, $100 for two hours. But the Board Exam Boot, um, sorry, the Board Exam Prep Academy, I kind of got confused there. Um, you could sign up for that and get this for free. So it's completely up to you. But this is, of course, a free video. So let's talk about some questions because I know you're all excited. So let's start with question one, shall we? Because I want to talk to you guys about these questions, but I also want to talk about why some of the answers are not correct and why one answer is the most correct. So we will talk about this. So everybody can see my screen here, I hope. So, okay, here we go. So, what does air polishing consist of? Is it A, delivers warm water and sodium lauryl sulfate under pressure? Is it B, delivers saline rinse and sodium chloride under pressure? C, delivers warm water and sodium under pressure? Or D, delivers warm water and sodium bicarbonate under pressure? So think about these. I'll give you guys a second to think about it. This is kind of a trickier question because clearly you have to know what air polishing is. You need to know what all of these other terms are too. So you, do you remember what sodium bicarbonate means? Do you remember what sodium chloride is? Do you know what sodium lauryl sulfate is? And do you know what sodium is? So you see how you have to think about everything. You have to take what you learned from semester one, and then you have to kind of move on from there and know everything else. So stop this video if you still need to think about the answer, because I'm going to talk about it in a second. Okay, so let's move on, but stop the video if you still need to think about the answers here. Okay, so the answer is D, delivers warm water and sodium bicarbonate under pressure. So do you guys remember what sodium bicarbonate is? It is baking soda. So air polishing consists of pretty much baking soda and water. That is what it is. Now, do you guys remember what air polishing is used for though? It's not for scaling the teeth, but it's for removing stain. So you would use this instead of your typical polisher, your typical profi head. So you would not use this in, in the uh, replacement of your instruments per se, because it's not cleaning the teeth, but it's helping to remove stain. So does everybody understand that? Okay, and sodium chloride is bleach. I hope you all remember that because they don't often say bleach or baking soda on the board exam, but they will use these more confusing terms if you're not used to hearing them all the time. So make sure to know that. So if you have questions, you guys, though, please, again, um, let me know. You should know my email at this point. If you are a member of the, uh, the Board Exam Prep Academy, you do have access to the private Facebook page, too, where you can email me, send me a message all day, every day, So, because I am here to help. Next question. Now, I'm probably not pronouncing this right, so don't laugh too hard, please, but what is Sjodren's Syndrome? Do you guys remember this? And this is good to know for the real world also. So as you can see, this is not in multiple choice. It is a short answer because you guys have to know this. So it's either you know it or you don't. If you don't know this, look in your oral pathology textbook. It is there. Um, my members should know this because we talk about it often in our oral pathology class and in our pharmacology class as well. So stop the video if you need to think about it. Let's talk about the answer. So this is something that means the patient has dry eyes and dry mouth, so both of them. It's common in females um, over the age of 30 or 40, depending on the textbook you read. So if you see a 20-year-old female, this isn't common. If you see a 40-year-old female or older, this is more common. 
not as common in seniors per se, because if they haven't had it yet, they probably don't have dry eyes and dry mouth, but it's more common in ages 40 or 50 or slightly above. So this affects the salivary and the lacrimal glands, needs long-term management and common as the patient ages, but not too old. So an 85-year-old won't experience this for the first time. This is an autoimmune disorder and most common in females. The primary form is when the lacrimal and salivary glands are involved and the secondary form is when it's combined with another autoimmune disease. So let's say the patient has lupus or uh, psoriasis, which are two common autoimmune diseases. They're more prone to have something else, so they could be more prone to have this, okay? So dry eyes and dry mouth. Next question, I hope you're all having fun so far and hopefully you are, you are all doing well so far too. Okay, another short answer because you guys gotta know this, it has been on the board exam before, not for dental assistance per se, but for dental hygienists, yes. So what is, again, I'm sorry for my pronunciation here, what is morsicatio bucarum? I would be a horrible oral pathology teacher because I could not pronounce anything. <laughs> So what do you guys think? Have you seen this before? Do you remember it? Think of your oral pathology classes. Think about the common oral pathology lesions you may see, but that are harmless. And let's talk about it. Okay. So this is known as cheek chewing, linea alba, um, uh, frictional keratosis, more pronounced keratin on the inside of the cheeks, all of that. So that's another name for it. So let me show you guys this again. Because sometimes they, they have this term on the board exam and they ask you what it is. It's the easiest thing, linea alba. I know you all know what that is, but you might not have seen this before, but they have referred to it on the board exam as this before. So now, if you guys see that on the board exam, you are welcome, you will all have it right. Okay, let's go through another one here. Okay, so this is a multiple choice. What procedure is formacresol used for? A perfect dental assisting question, but dental um, hygiene students need to know this too. So is it A, extractions, B, amalgams, C, surgery, or D, pulpotomy? So you need to know what, what this is. I'll give you guys a second. Please pause the video though if you don't want to hear the answer yet. Okay, now you would find this in your procedures notes, in your dental materials notes, something like that. And again, if you are a member of the board exam prep academy, we have gone through this. So we are pretty intense. We have sessions twice a month where we talk about these types of questions at every single session. So I make sure that you are all, you know exactly what it is. You have all of the notes, the materials, the mock exams in your private membership login area. So trust me, if you're not sure how to study or what to study, sign up for the board exam prep academy. It will be totally worth it to you and you will pass the exam. So, okay, let's move on. So, sorry for the color here. You might not be able to see that, so let me change it. So, the procedure is used for pulpotomies. So, um, if the pulp is um, um, affected, if they need to do a pulpotomy. So, it says right here. So, formacresol is not used for any other procedure. So, it's not. This is the only answer. This is the best answer, and it smells. So, when I used to work with it as a dental assistant, like I would pretty much open it, it up, take out the little bit that I needed, and close the lid like right away and close it tight because it smells. Like, you will be able to smell it throughout the whole office. It smells pretty yucky. As a hygienist though, I don't smell it anymore. I don't know if I'm just used to it or I'm far enough away from the dental assistants and having them working, but I just don't smell it now, which is good because it's not a nice smell. Okay, moving on. Another short um, uh, multiple choice question. So how do you know the etched enamel has been etched accordingly? So does everybody know what I'm talking about? You have to etch enamel for certain procedures, but you need to make sure that you're doing it properly. And how can you tell? So is the tooth A, smooth, chalky, white appearance? B, rough, chalky, white appearance? C, smooth, white appearance? Or D, rough, clear appearance? 
I know it sounds crazy. It sounds like there's a lot there, but you guys got to know this. So think about your sealants when you are applying sealants. You need to etch the tooth first, right? Now, how can you tell that you have etched it properly? Because remember, if you haven't, you need to do it again. So I'll talk about that in a second, but let's talk about the answer first. Okay, so again, sorry for the color. Let me change that. So it has to be a rough, chalky white appearance, okay? So if the tooth doesn't have that chalky white appearance and it doesn't look like it's been etched and roughed up a little bit, you need to re-etch, but not for the full 30 seconds. Um, depending on the etch you use, it could be 30 seconds, it could be 60 seconds, but typically it's 30 seconds. Etch for five to 10 to 15 seconds. Again, it depends on the etch. Depends on the textbook you're reading, but the best answer is typically 10 to 15 seconds. So you don't etch for the same amount of time because it should be pretty much etched already, but it's not perfect. So that's why you have to do it again. And remember, if you're applying etch on the dentin, which I guess you guys wouldn't unless you're a restorative hygienist like me, but I have to think about this when I am putting etch on dentin. You etch for like five seconds, hardly anything, because dentin is a lot softer, right? And enamel's the hardest substance we have. So enamel, you leave the etch on for 30 seconds, for the dentin, about five seconds. But you guys don't really have to worry about that because you shouldn't be etching dentin anyway because if you're applying a sealant, it's not on dentin, it's on enamel. So, sorry, I don't mean to confuse you, so let me just scratch that and say that yes, it needs to be a rough, chalky white appearance. If it's not, re-etch for 10 to 15 seconds. So is everybody good with that? Let's go over two more questions. Okay, so why is acid etching used when placing a composite filling? Good question, you guys have to know this. Is it A, to smoothen the surface of enamel? Is it B, to roughen the surface of enamel? So those two are opposites. Is it C, to add fluoride onto the surface of enamel? Or D, to um, moisten the layer above the enamel? What do you guys think? Think about that for a second here. I know, we are asking some pretty good questions. Now for the answer. So it is to roughen the surface of enamel. It has nothing to do with adding anything to it. It has nothing to do with making it easier to see or smoother. It's, it's to roughen the surface so that when the dentist or the restorative hygienist places prime and bond, it can bond to the enamel properly. So then the composite after the prime and bond bonds to the prime and bond, which has bonded to enamel. So the way or why we do this is so that everything bonds properly. So does that make sense? I hope so. Um, and again, I talk about this more in my sessions and in my courses, but do not hesitate that if you need me, email me anytime or feel free to join the group on um, Facebook also. There's a free group, um, facebook.com slash dental L tutoring, or of course my um, members of the Board Exam Prep Academy, they have full access to the private Facebook group, which is awesome because they can ask me anything anytime and I will answer as soon as possible. So it's pretty awesome. And, and we do talk a lot. There's always new mock exam questions. There, there are files, images, documents. We are literally studying all day, every day because I want you guys to pass the board exam, right? And you want to pass the board exam so you don't have to study anymore and spend more money, right? So let's go over one more question. Okay, so what is true regarding pulp capping? So A, direct pulp capping is carried out on unexposed pulp. B, direct pulp capping is carried out on exposed pulp. C, indirect pulp capping is carried out on exposed pulp. Or D, none of the above. So remember, read the questions carefully. So I'll pick out a few key points for you. So do you see how these questions sound the same, but they're different? So if you read the questions too quickly, I can see you not seeing, or um, if you read the answers too quickly, I can see you guys missing the key points. So please make sure to pick out the key points in the answers and go from there. So does everybody see that? So I'll give you guys a second. What do you guys think the answer is? And let's move on. The answer is B, direct pulp capping is carried out on exposed pulp. This is the only answer. This is the best answer. Okay, so I hope that these questions help. Um, 
I'll give you guys my website in case you guys did want to sign up for the Board Exam Prep Academy because I'm, I'm not just saying this, it is awesome, it's extremely helpful. We do have a 99.3% success rate, so I can help you guys pass. I believe it's welcome.html. I should know this, but um, I believe this is the address, but if for some reason this doesn't work, then go to dentalL.com, and I do have it right there. So um, I hope that helps, and if you guys need to email me, email me anytime, I mean it, at andrea at dentalL.com, because again, you guys, I'm here to help, and I want you guys to pass the exam. I wish that color was different. I'm just going to remove the hyperlink so that I can show you guys the proper color here. So there you go. So if you guys need me, here I am right here. Please let me know. Um, what else was I going to say? And if you haven't had a look at the Facebook page yet, you should because I do post free things on there also all the time because I love to give away free stuff. And that's what I wanted to say more recently. Um, if you want to sign up for the Board Exam Prep Academy, you don't have to pay the full price right away. So the full price is $374, but you could pay either over two months or four months if that's easier for you. Because again, I am here to help you all, and that is what I want to do. I I, I, um, I tutor for the Canadian board exam, the American board exam, everything. So please, I can help you and I want to help you because being a dental assistant or a dental hygienist is amazing. I was a dental assistant 12, 12 years ago. I loved it. I became a dental hygienist shortly after that. And then more recently, I became a restorative hygienist about a year and a half ago. So it is an excellent place to be it is awesome you will learn something new every single day and you get paid well and you will love it so please so i want you all to pass the board exam let me know if you need anything and i will have some more questions up here whoops let me put that back to my slide here i will have more questions up here shortly so please just let me know if you guys need anything and i will talk to you guys all very very soon see you later